We want to replace every line of C and C++ code with Rust by 2030, and we are looking for one engineer who can output 1 million lines of code every month leveraging AI. Yes, this is a real Microsoft job posting from a few days back, and it's probably the best depiction of the expectations placed on developers these days. The so-called AI revolution of 2025 completely changed the way people quantify software quality and output. Thanks to the LLM code generation slot machine, non-technical people can supposedly become Vibe coders and write thousands of lines of code monthly, while technical people should up their game and generate millions of lines of code every month. And, if you think this is one of the dumbest ideas in recent history, you are not alone, and we have to talk about it. It's the Monday morning review. So someone inside Microsoft has the same dream we all had when we ended up in a huge project with complicated business logic, a deprecated tech stack, and tons of technical debt. Instead of spending the time understanding the project, they want to rewrite it all from scratch in a new language. Of course, any experienced developer will tell you that this is a completely terrible idea and that the golden rule to never change a running system should never be broken. However, we are in this era where flesh and bone programmers are a thing of the past and coding agents are the shiny new thing that will successfully refactor your entire monolith by hallucinating your business logic and removing all your edge case implementation. But let's assume for a second that this is actually achievable. After all, the person in charge of this will not write the code, they'll manage the agents and review the output. So let's review the actual numbers. 1 million lines of code per month is roughly 33,000 lines of code per day, including weekends. Now, supposedly, this poor soul in charge of orchestrating this whole thing works a regular 9 to 5, so they end up having to read, review and green light around 4,000 lines of code per hour or around 65 lines of code per minute. And, of course, this poor human isn't supposed to look at the actual shape of the code because there are static analysis tools and other agents doing code review. He has to look at the actual meaning of the code and to make sure the solution perfectly matches the problem it is supposed to solve. Well, this sounds perfectly achievable and reasonable. Ah, cheeky boy! <laughs> Don't get me wrong, despite my usual videos, I'm not a complete AI skeptic. However, it really baffles my mind that these large companies and experienced tech influencers can seriously get behind some of these ideas with a straight face. I get that software developers aren't operating in a vacuum and profit margins are what really matters, but this narrative that code output can be industrialized like manufacturing is delusional at best and reckless at worst. And since we are talking about code quality, profits and work-life balance, here is a nice piece of trivia for you. Awesome trivia. In 10 seconds. Thanks to the holidays, I got a few days off, so I decided to spend some evenings playing the long dark. And, when you open that game, this is the first message you'll see on the screen. Made without crunch by people who care about their players at a studio that cares about its people. If you don't know already, game studios are famous for this thing called crunch. To meet tight deadlines, developers are pushed into absurd overtime for months and sometimes even years. This is so common in the game industry that they have an official name for it. But here is the really interesting thing. Hinterland Studio proved that they can build an amazing game that sold millions of copies worldwide while also treating developers like human beings instead of disposable throughput machines. Back to the video, this is why this AI narrative is so frustrating. We got to this weird point where big names in the tech industry are measuring software quality by lines of code, which is by far the dumbest metric possible. Developers were asked to say how many lines of code they wrote, and if it wasn't enough, they were terminated. Anybody who thinks that's a valid metric is too stupid to work at a tech company. I would argue that the opposite is true, and moving forward, real software value will be measured in how many lines of code devs will be able to remove on a daily basis. Because, based on this new direction in the industry, we'll all end up being forced to use LLMs to generate thousands of lines of code with a prompt and then spend the rest of the day removing the useless clutter from that generated solution. Management will call that efficiency and they'll be able to proudly announce that the company has integrated AI in their workflow. AI is a good tool for specific coding tasks, but the way it is being pushed down our throats is more than irritating. Take for instance this latest take on junior developers from the CEO of Amazon Web Services. On one hand, he is making a great point about the issue of removing juniors breaking the talent pipeline. But then he says that juniors are more valuable because they often have more experience with AI. In other words, having experience in giving prompts to an agent is more valuable than having the actual fundamental knowledge and experience to actually understand how to solve a problem. This is like saying, I'm a better football player than Ronaldo because I have more hours in FIFA than he has. 
but in reality, the last time I actually played football, the real Ronaldo was still active. Ah, cheeky boy! <laughs> and it gets worse, because the other point that he's making is, of course, cost-saving related. In his words, companies looking to optimize their costs should not look at juniors because they are the least expensive. Clearly, he is hinting that the real cost savings are higher up the ladder. Seniors are expensive, opinionated, slow, and most of the time annoying. And, in Mr. Garman's mind, these seniors can be easily swapped with low-cost juniors assisted by AI tools. But the reality is that 30% of companies that laid off workers expecting savings ended up increasing expenses and many had to rehire later. However, I might be wrong on this one, but I would like these Monday morning review videos to become a place for discussions and friendly disagreements, so please share your thoughts about the current situation in the comments. We are also very close to reaching 100k subs, so please don't forget to subscribe to the channel, and until next time, thank you for watching.